Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. I am your host, BDB, Behind the Bar. How y'all doing today? I hope everybody's doing great. I hope everybody's doing wonderful today. Now, let's talk about it, man. Uh, yeah, Shine has been in the news a lot lately regarding, you know, his statement that he made uh, a few days ago about the incident that happened um, in New York City back in 1999. And it seems that Shine is ch now changing his story. You know, when he first got out, you know, he was singing a whole different tune, but now... You know, it sounds to me he's ready to, you know, in a sense, start the talking. Um, and I want to know y'all perspective and y'all opinion on what's going on here. Um, back in like 2011, I believe, you know, he was on The Breakfast Club and Shine says on The Breakfast Club that Diddy never had a gun at, at the um, club. Let's talk about it. Did Diddy ever fire a gun that night? Nah, Diddy ain't fire no gun. So, so I, I didn't even know somebody really got shot. I really thought you was just shooting in the ceiling and it was the bullet. Nah, the listen, listen, but listen, this is what I'm trying to say. I'm consistent with it. Go to MTV right now and, and, and Google uh, uh, Julius Jones and, and Matthew Scar Allen. and they. All right, so so everybody understand what how the story goes because you got to remember, this story is 25 years old. Shine did shoot off in the club. He did hit somebody. The name is the guy with Julius Jones who took the stand and pointed Shine out. So Shine was never an innocent person. His excuse right now is pretty much saying that the young lady, Natalia Rubin, he, he never shot her. And now when Natalia is finally coming out, well, Natalia has been saying this for a while now, but now it's starting to, um, to come to mainstream now as far as her coming out speaking and saying that Diddy was the one who opened fire and shot her and it wasn't Shine. Um, so we're going to talk about it because if you look at what's going on now, fast forward to 2024, Shine is now a politician and he's talking like a politician. And this accent to me, y'all, his accent, no, I can't get over the accent. The accent to me is crazy. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Opens wounds um, when you hear, um, you know, the victim saying that it was Diddy that shot her that is what is the most remarkable oh you didn't see that i saw that okay and that was triggered by a lawsuit from a producer that produced on the love album who is making accusations and in those accusations he says that the gentleman confessed to the shooting and that is what stands out to me the most because, you know, I've done my best to put it behind me and to move forward. Uh, and so, um, but it certainly reopens the wounds that I've been saying this all along. Everyone knew all along that I was the fall guy. Um, but my political enemies and, you know, detractors, it opens wounds. Try to make me into, you know, this criminal, um, but everyone knew that I was a young kid that took the fall. Everyone knew that that was the story. I'm just saying that I maintain my innocence all this time. I said I was defending myself. I didn't get into who did what. Um, but the victim is telling you who did what. And another, I, I understand that there are other witnesses. Is she, is she accurate, sir? I'm not going to get into that. The reporter asks, is the young lady, Natalia Rubin, is she accurate with her statement? And Shine says he's not going to get into that, which is strange to me. Because according to you, um, you said that Diddy never had a gun that day. According to you, he never brandished a weapon, never had a gun. Let me bring it back to y'all real quick. So I know all this loud talking ain't gonna go but so far before somebody starts squeezing off. So when I seen the old boy reach for that ratchet, I reached for mine and I popped him in the shoulder and then they grabbed me and that's when the ratchet went off in the ceiling, when other ratchets was going off. But at the end of the day, he was doing the same thing this kid Jason Taylor is doing right now. He was loud mouthing, all of them was loud mouthing. And listen, if I'm with Sean Combs, I'm with Sean Combs and ain't gonna be too much loud mouthing and ain't nobody gonna threaten us and ain't nobody gonna put our lives at and then that's how that thing happened. Did, did he ever fire a gun that night? Nah, did he ain't fire no gun. 
So so I, so I didn't even know somebody really got shot. I really thought you was just shooting in the ceiling and it was the bullet. Nah, the listen, chain. listen, but listen, this is what I'm trying to say. I'm consistent with it. Go to MTV right now and, and, and Google uh, uh, Julius Jones and, and Matthew Scar Allen and they both got on the stand and said, Sean pulled out his gun and aimed at me and squeezed off into me. You understand what I'm talking about? Pause. That's how that thing went down. And then the, the security from the club tried to grab my hand and then the ratchet went off into the ceiling. But come on. Totally consistent. At the end of the day, you know, it, it was a terrible situation. It's a tragedy for my mom, a tragedy for everybody involved. It's 18 years later. I'm still banned from America, still banned from London, still banned from Canada. It, it's, it's not a pretty thing. You know, I, I should be an example to young kids as to what happens when you engage in this lifestyle. It's, it's not going to be a platinum record. It's not going to be millions of dollars. This is what's going to happen. You're not going to walk around in Fox Hill Mall and get knocked down in front of your son. No. You understand? You, 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 either you going to kill somebody or somebody going to kill you or you're going to spend a decade or your lifetime in prison. You know what I'm saying? That this rap thing is, is, is not the truth, man. Are you so bitter, I'm a great example. Are you bitter or disgruntled about any of that? Having to do time or... I you, mean, you listen, at the end of the day when people say that, my man, when I say I'm in Paris at the plaza, ask for me, I'm really in Paris at the plaza. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm mm. good. Like, I'm good. Like, that's one of the reasons why, you know, I'm so focused on, on, on my relationship with God. You dig? It, it don't have anything to do with, with changing and, and being a square and being corny. Nah. Like, you got to have some type of divine intervention to endure what I've endured. But there's no bitterness. There's no nothing. There's just truth. I'm going to speak the truth like I know it. Drake should not be rapping about catching the body. I'm you know, with you on that. Now we can agree on that. I mean, and, 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 and Officer Rick should not be talking about anything other than, you know, nice girls that he like or eating hamburgers or, or you know what I'm saying, his <laughs> SAT scores. He not supposed to be no mobster rapper. I'm sorry, man. Wow, y'all heard it for yourselves. That's crazy. He said it right there. Back in 2011, that Diddy never pulled out a weapon. Pay attention. But there's a twist in the plot to the story that I'm sure trying to figure out here because it sounds to me like back then, you know, Shine was making it seem like he had some type of friendship with the victim, Natalia Rubin, who was allegedly shot by Diddy, Shine, who knows? <laughs> I'm confused at this point. But the moral of the story is Shine went to prison because he did fire off his gun inside the club. Shine did shoot somebody. Was it Natalia Rubin? Probably not, but he did shoot the other gentleman. He did shoot off in the club. He admitted to that. So I don't know what he's doing right now, trying to clean his image up. The bottom line is you shot somebody in the club. Thank God nobody got killed, but you shot somebody. The victim that you shot took the stand, pointed you out, and it is what it is. So what, what are we arguing about at the end of the day? What is the real issue? What's the discussion? What's the topic? Who shot Natalia Rubin or what? At this point, Sean should just stand 10 toes down and just say, hey, I did it. It was me. I served my time. It is what it is. Because at this point, we're playing word semantics. Yeah, I shot this person and that person, but I didn't shoot him and her. Like, make it make sense. It's crazy. But I didn't even know that he knew the victim personally, Natalia Rubin. Let's talk about it. The thing you have Jews from Iran, from Syria, from Lebanon, from all over the world. It's a God thing. That's now, what about faith. what about your relationship with Diddy? Yeah, because you said you consistent. You talk about consistency, but yeah. you was consistently yeah, dissing like Diddy. Then y'all got cool again. Then you started yeah. dissing him again. That's inconsistent, well, Sean. Well, well no, nah, listen, listen. He he reached out to me and he apologized to me. He been apologizing to me, and he reached out to me and apologized to me. And, and, and contrary to whatever you know misinterpretation y'all having I'm not about you know glorifying you know black on black crime and black on Spanish crime I'm not into all that the bottom line is if I have to defend myself I'm gonna do what needs to be done you understand if, if, if you or me then you gonna go but at the end of the day I want to take the opportunity to show you know African Americans and Latin Americans that it ain't had to be all that you did that we could move on and, and we could do something positive and productive. So my idea was that me and him was going to go around and talk to kids and, and try to do, you know, philanthropic work and, you know, inspire kids like in the south side of Chicago, blah, 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 blah. But that's not what he had in mind. You understand? For him, it was just a photo op. For him, it was just, you know, mm. I don't know what he got going on in this.
but he's not into things like that. He ain't into helping the, the communities and lifting these kids up. For him, it was just, you know, I guess maybe a sigh of relief that he got the guilty conscience away. But moving forward, he wasn't really into that. And for me, it wasn't enough for us to just say sorry and that's it. Like, you know what I'm saying? You owe me. You know, that's 10 years. And again, it's not you owe me because I fired a gun. You owe me because you called a witness to testify against me when I was defending myself and yourself and your broad and everybody that was there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, now, now, Shine, Marco, Marco. now that the case is over, everything's done, you served your yeah. time, what happened that night? Ooh, this is interesting. Shine actually get into details of what happened that night at the club shooting in New York City with Puff Daddy, J-Lo, Shine, whoever else was in the building. Let's talk about it. I mean, well, you know, first of all, Natanya Rubin, you know, who was the only innocent bystander, uh, she was a friend of mine. You know what I'm saying? She, she, you know, me and her used to go to the studio. She was a friend of mine. She left with my man. You lied. Cheated. <laughs> Took all I had. She was a friend of mine. Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 yo, this story gets crazy. With my homeboy Manny, Imani Haley, um, you know, and, and that's the only thing that I really regret. Although there's no proof that it was my ratchet that hit her, because according to the government shit and like according that, to all the like witnesses, that, it was like a that, few guns that. going off that night. You mm -hmm. understand? I tried to shoot one guy, and that was the guy that was with Scar and was rapping. That's the kid Julius Jones. They got clapped in the shoulder. So despite all the little ratchets that rhyme in the car, talk is cheap, motherfucker. My old shooting in the ceiling. That's after I clapped one dude and the security guard went to grab me. Then the ratchet went off in the ceiling. Bang, you dig? Why didn't the security uh, do their job first bang, of all? Bang. I mean, you know, we're talking about the club security. So club security ain't really built like that. You understand? When I see somebody move for a ratchet, I'm clapping. And I know Scar. Even though he ended up telling on me and his man ended up telling on me, you know, even the biggest mobsters, they roll over. But that don't mean they ain't a mobster. So Sandy the boy. Do I need to play any more? <laughs> yo, I can't make this up, y'all. I can't make this up. Why are we talking about this 25 years later? Obviously, because of what Diddy's going through right now. But the thing that threw me off guard is the fact that Shine is now trying to pretend to be some model, citizen, innocent guy that never did this and this, that, and the third. You admitted that you shot the guy. The guy testified you, pointed you on the stair, and it is what it is. Now we're just dealing with just nonsense at this point. But it is what it is, yo. Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of Behind the Bar. I'm your host, BDB. And I'll see y'all next time on another episode of Behind the Bar. I'm off this joint. BDB, over and out. Peace. Sammy the boy had 20 bodies. So, you know, he let that thing off. But he's still a rat at the end of the day. So I knew Scar and them from Brooklyn. I knew what they were about. So I know all this loud talking ain't going to go but so far before somebody starts squeezing off. So when I seen old boy reach for that ratchet, I reached for mine and I popped them in the shoulder and then they grabbed me and that's when the ratchet went off in the ceiling and the other ratchets was going off. But at the end of the day, he was doing the same thing this kid Jason Taylor is doing right now. He was loud mouthing, all of them was loud mouthing. And listen, if I'm with Sean Combs, I'm with Sean Combs and ain't gonna be too much loud mouthing and ain't nobody gonna threaten us and ain't nobody